here. You can, I'm just wondering, I'm just looking at these threes, I'm just wondering whether there is any way of eliminating um, one of these threes. If you look at column three of the grid, actually, you can see that the numbers one and two are occurring in lots of lots of these rows. So we've got one and two here in row one, one and two here in row four, one and two in row five, and one and two in row nine. So I think there's only two places that the numbers one and two can go in row three which is here and here. So I wonder if that's useful because now, now if we ask ourselves where can we place a three in row three, you can see we can't place a three here because we managed to get the pencil marks earlier. So there's no three here. There's no three here because of this three. And there's no three here because of this three. So in fact, there is only one place that a three can go in row three. Uh, let's just see if that's helpful in any way. <laughs> Probably isn't, which is infuriating. Um, okay, now I can't see how to make more use of that. Um, so, when we get to this point in the solve, we typically have to abandon the pencil mark approach and we have to start looking for, or the way I would approach it is I would look for cells that can only contain exactly two numbers now, rather than um, what we've been doing so far, which is subtly different. So if we look, for example, at, uh, where should we take a look? Let's look at column nine. Um, you can see we need to place the numbers one, five, eight, and nine. So this square here is a one or an eight. This square here, one, it's going to be five, eight, or nine. One, five, or nine, and one, or eight. So in fact, the one that's that is useful. If we look at column nine now, we have a one, eight pair, a bit like we have with the one and two here, just arose in a slightly different way. So that allows us to eliminate this. And this, which gives us a 5 9 pair also in column 9. So now I probably take a look at the central row of the grid. You can see we've got 5 9, 8 9. So we need 5 8 or 9 here. Mm. Well, I don't see a way of eliminating either of those numbers from that cell. But we now take a look at column 2. You can see we need the numbers 3 8 and 9 in column 2. So we can place a 3, 9 here, 8, eight 9 there, and 3, 8 here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it might be better. Let's now also take a look at column 3 here, just because this was quite restricted once we got this 1, 2 pair in this as well. So essentially we have six numbers now. Uh, and, and it's again these numbers 5, 8, and 9 that we're missing. So we have 5, 8, and 9 there, 5, 8, and 9 there, <laughs> 5, 8, and 9 there. Oh, hang on. No, that's not 5 here. And there's a 5 already here, so we've got 8, 9 here. <coughs> oh, well, okay. Now, last week we covered uh, why. Y wings, which make a common appearance in these puzzles, it seems to me anyway. Now, remember when we're looking for a Y wing, it's a complicated way of saying you're looking for uh, a bent triple. So, if we look at um, this square, I'll do some highlighting at the end of the video, but this square, this square, and this square, you can see that there is a triple there on the numbers 3, 8, and 9. They're just not in a line. Um, now, this means that we have to be careful with our eliminations, but there is normally something we can do with these. So let's just spend a moment or two thinking about how this might work. So when you find a Y-wing like this, it's always what I call the pivot square that we need to think about, the central square of the Y-wing. 
So the number or the y-wing the y square or the pivot square is going to be the square that when we pick one option or the other, it affects uh, the edges of the y-wing in very particular ways. So let's look at this square. We can see if we could pick, if this was a 3, the effect of that would be to make this square a 9. And if this is an 8, the effect of that would be to make this square a 9. So we know that, uh, I'll just do it for the sake of exposition, we're either going to have a 9 in this square or in this square. That's going to be absolutely forced in the final solution. So what can we tell about the rest of the grid, therefore, if we know there is either a 9 in this square or this square? Well, we can say that any square that can see both this square and this square cannot contain a 9, because we know that there will either be a 9 here or here. Now you can see immediately, if we look down at the bottom of the grid at this square, this certainly sees this square and it sees this square. So this square cannot contain a 9. So let's remove the 9 there, and I'm just going to see if I can remove, yes, this one. Oh, I need to remove that 9 there, I don't know whether it's going to let me do it. What's it doing? I can't remove that. Okay, uh, that looks now correct. So we've used the Y wing, we've got a 5 8 here. Now, I'm just wondering now whether we can make use of that further. Oh, yes, we can, I think. Now, there's a lovely technique that we haven't covered in these videos yet um, that I think we can use here. And it's, it's, it's called, I think it's called an empty rectangle. But it revolves around the fact that you need to find uh, a, a, a three by three area of the grid, this one, for example where there is a rectangle of cells, where a number cannot go. Now here, you can see that there is it's no longer, because we've removed this 9, which I, oh, this is why I was focusing on this square, um, because it can no longer have a 9 here. We have a rectangle shape of cells where a 9 cannot go. So the, nine, the 9s can only go, if you like, in this sort of L shape around this 3x3 three three block. Now obviously there are a couple of cells here that can't, you know, this 9 is, is saying this cell can't be a 9, but I'm just going to do this for the sake of exposition. Um, I'm just going to show you all the positions of a 9, like this. And then we can combine this feature with this 5-9 pair that we have here. Why do I say we can do that? Well, let's think about the two possible ways that a 9 could appear in this box. And when I say two possible ways, what I mean is the nines are either going to appear in column one, yeah, so the nines are either going to be down this side of this rectangle, or they're going to be down this side of the rectangle. So they're either going to be in column one, or they're going to be in row seven. We don't know which, and I don't care which. Why don't I care which? Well, let's think about the effect. Let's do the row first. Let's imagine the nine was along here. If the 9 is along here, the effect on this cell is important. This will now be a 5, and this will be a 9. So I'm going to just switch to big numbers again. So if the 9 is along here, this cell will be a 9. Now let's ask ourselves the question, what happens if instead the 9 is in this column, column 1? You can see immediately that it no longer would be possible for this square to contain a 9. So it's really quite um, interesting in terms of what's going on here because we are able to show using this technique, now hopefully you'll let me delete this 9 this time, yes it did, that whether or not the 9s are in row 7 or column 1, it's not possible for this cell to contain a 9 and therefore we can remove the 9 from this, this position here. Now, surely that will be an interesting feature in terms of solving the puzzle. It forces the nines up into this part of the grid. I'm going to remove this, all these nines I'm putting down here because they're going to confuse, confuse me. And let's think about whether or not we can 
make some progress from there. 